Okay, I'm going to get started on uh, this lead screw that's going to be used to raise the uh, head up and down on the column. And what I'm using for that is, I don't know, a lot of you old timers remember them jacks uh, that were like a triangle shaped deal and they had uh, almost like a lead screw in it. And I saved the, the screw and the thrust bearing out of an old jack. And it had a hook on it that hooked someplace on the car. It's made out of cast iron, which is actually the nut. And I turned that down. It had a uh, hook that stuck out like that. I cut it off with a bandsaw. And I turned it down to 7 eighths here. That's just where it cleaned up enough and I left a little flange on it and that's going to go in the bottom of this and then the lead screw will go down through and I'll probably use a one or two set screws to to hold it in place and uh, this bearing where did it go? Oh, it's on the lead screw this will go on top here, and then I'll have the handle here. And then this bottom one, I'm going to put this bearing here in, which will just run right on the outside of the threads, um, just as a guide. And I got it marked out for the set screws that are going to hold these in place on the post. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'll show you the results when I get that done. Okay, I got the set screws in the collars. I got the hole board for the uh, lead screw, top and bottom. And over in the mill, I have the slider hole located, all set up, ready to drill. Now I'll need the whole depth that my milling machine can do to drill that because it's five inches or just a hair under five inches. So, okay, I successfully got that hole drilled all the way through. Now I've got a uh, seven eighths bit mounted, and that's going to be to drill the hole for this part where the threads in. And that's going to go down in two and a half inches. Making some progress. Um, I drilled a uh, place in here for a set screw to hold this threaded uh, part in. Put a flat spot on it so that'll drop right in there like that. And I can lock her in with a set screw. Got my lead screw cut to length. Got a bunch of collars set up on it. So I'm going to stick it together. Hopefully, you guys will be able to see if I back this baby up a little bit. Tip it up. Let's see how she's going to work. I had this in my uh, aluminum pile to melt. It was an old handle off a meat grinder. I converted it to fit on the top of that, so that'll be for my top crank. So, stick this collar on. Let's see. 
thrust bearing on. A little spacer to keep it up off the top casting. progress. Got the base mounted on an angle plate in the mill to drill a hole for the uh, locking screw. I want it to go in nice and square so it wouldn't be uh, chewing up the column. I'm going to use a, a brass bolt in there but still I want it to be nice and square so we get good contact. So I'll probably use the same setup for the column that moves up and down seem like an easy way to do it. tapped and I'll I'll tap it in here too so it's nice and straight. Half 13. Okay got the uh, locking screws all done. I had two of these brass half 13 bolts that I'd saved out of something that I tore apart and I put it in a lathe, cut the head off even with the body, drilled a quarter inch hole through this way and took a quarter inch bolt with a long uh, shank on it 
screw the nut on, cut it, cut it off even with a nut, put it in the lathe and took the hexes off of both ends. Yeah, if I kept the camera in place you might be able to see. And uh, then put it through there and screwed the nut back on. Um, if the nut doesn't stay on I'll throw some Loctite on it, but went on there pretty good. And uh, same thing with the bottom one. So next I think I'm going to work on uh, the base. And then I can mount the head on uh, the rail and it'll be a lot easier to work on the head and get the motor and stuff mounted. Been working on the base. Uh, channel iron is 12 inches wide. Uh, it's about 3 8 thick. It had some stuff mounted on it, bolted on it, and uh, welded on it. I got that stuff all cleaned off, run the fly cutter on it, and as you can see, the corners got little nubs on them yet because I couldn't quite reach it. It was <laughs> good thing it wasn't any bigger; it wouldn't have fit on here. And I built one T slot in it, and I'm about ready to do the next one. Um, it's simple. I just I drilled a half inch hole. I'm gonna plunge down in there with that carbide bit and run a slot up there six inches and then I come back and uh, go back and forth a little bit so you can drop a bolt down in there. Uh, pretty simple but noisy so I'm not gonna video it. Well originally I planned on this thing being portable but it's gotten way too heavy so I decided to put legs on it. Didn't really want something that took up a lot of floor space but if it's going to work right, it's got to be heavy enough. So I had these pieces of angle iron from something, I don't know. And uh, figured out what the maximum length was going to be. Cut them off in the bandsaw. So that's what it's going to be mounted on. Well, I got that original drill press table set up in the mill. I'm going to try to use that, I guess you would call it, as an accessory. And uh, I noticed that this is the bolt that goes in the table to tilt it. And if you get the bolt straight, it's crooked. <laughs> as far as the casting goes. They never made a flat spot on here. When you tighten it down it hits on the one side of the bolt and puts it in an awful bind. So I got it set up in the mill and I'm just gonna run this baby down and take a few cuts off until it gets level. That way when you tighten that bolt up it won't be in a bind. Got the uh, post C-clamped on the uh, the base just to try to get an idea what it's going to be like and where to locate it. If I put it back in that far corner I seem to have the best coverage with the uh, drill press head. I just got it roughly assembled and uh, it swings fine and it goes up and down fine and that drill press table that I just milled my plan was to have that so I can set it on there and I'll be able to uh, move it wherever wherever I need to on it just happens to be 12 inches wide same as the other and uh, I cut the drill press column off at the height that this table can be swung 90 degrees if need be. Um, now that so I can I can go like that if I need to mount something on there. 
angle it, whatever. And uh, I don't know if we'll be able to see, but that's got to be, uh, I doubt you'll be able to see it, but I bet you there's an eighth inch notch in there to get that bolt so it was level. That was my plan for that. Next move is get that base fastened on this table. I'll uh, mark and drill those and tap them 3816 I think for those socket head screws. Got the holes drilled and tapped for the base and got it mounted on there. Got it stuck back together enough so I can work on this head part now. Figured I better work on getting the motor mounted and of course originally it was back here. Well I don't want it back here because I'd have to have it way out so far in order to get at this lock. So I want to try to mount the motor up this way, um, sort of like the Bridgeport motor is. And in order to do that I've got to reverse the motor. And I've got it tore apart on the bench. And what I'm thinking is there's no start switch in this, so it's not a capacitor start, and it is a capacitor run, which doesn't give them very much help, but this was just for light duty anyways. Um, so the two capacitor wires come in here, the two run windings are here. Um, so I'm thinking that this capacitor wire here goes over and hooks into this one. So in order to reverse it, I would need to take this from here and move it down to this one. So I think I'm going to have to cut these strings and get these opened up. And, uh, well... <laughs> these Chinese motors, they don't put any varnish in them. So in a, in a way that makes it nice because I don't have to fight with that. But I guess when I get done, I get some string tied in there. I'm going to have to put some varnish on it probably to hold it in place. But it's not the first time I've done this stuff, so I think we'll be successful. Well, I almost made the motor job hard. Uh, before I did anything, matter of fact, I got the stuff around to start cutting the strings and I thought, oh, wait a minute, this thing is really simple. I wonder if I just swap the armature around to the other end, if it would run the other way around, because I know some of them small little motors you can do that with. And sure enough, I swapped it around. It runs the other way now. So, that problem solved. Well, I finally got the motor mounted. Um, that took a lot of experimenting and thinking and wound up using a piece of angle iron. And I welded a, uh, I think it's a piece of 3 8 on there. And that's, the motor will slide on that on the regular, um, motor mount, the original, and then I made a couple of these things for <laughs> until I got the right size and shape. This is the uh, belt tensioner, and this is what I wound up with for the, for the belt cover. Um, had to cut this part of it off so the motor can stick up. So I still got protection in the front, and there is some protection back here too, but not total protection. So I'll show you how this goes together. Just fasten straight on where the original belt guard was mounted. A couple of 10 millimeter 
bolts here. Actually there was four. I'm only going to put two in because this is just temporary. Show you guys how it's going to work. Now I'll just slip this on. motor mount is on here mounted backwards this part used to face this way and this is for the belt tensioner and that goes right in the original spot like so and then the motor drops on both of these at the same time like so Oops. I forgot there's two spacers that go on here space the motor properly And then once you get that mounted, that's on the lowest speed. And I can just push on this and use the original tensioner. Close this up. change the speed, just loosen this up, back this off, move your belt up, put her up on the highest one, like so, push this back, tension it up, Adjustment on the belt guard there. Sounds like on the highest speed the belt rubber. Which I'll probably never use that speed anyways. But yeah, I can see right there it's just barely touching on the top of the belt guard. I only got one hinge on here now. The other one was back here. And in order to put another hinge on it would be quite a nightmare probably butcher it up so I think it's going to be fine it seems to be plenty sturdy when it's closed as long as I'm careful when I open it it should be fine so I guess next is going to be uh, getting all this stuff debarred cleaned up get the fan and stuff on here gotta make a cover for this uh, all the parts are made just gotta get it all cleaned up and uh, pretty up Been busy running a paintbrush, got the stuff debarred and smoothed off and threw a coat of paint on, threw a coat of paint on the sand. Okay, I think we're ready for some assembly.
Okay, let's try it again. Said I had 40 minutes of battery time and I went about two minutes and shut itself off. So continue on.
Okay, let's get this girl dry. About a piece of quarter inch band there, I think. Oh, I don't know. A little bit bigger than a quarter inch drill bit. something I didn't think of. This handle is going to interfere with this so I'll have to take that back out and move it one notch back I guess. something stopped that first time it rolled a little bit up on the drill bit and made it a little a little crooked like that. cheap drill bit I think she's gonna work okay say she's not for heavy duty stuff I'm just curious uh, get a tape measure let's see how Now from the column it's about 25 inches, from the lead screw about 24. And of course, I guess if you wanted to, if you had something you couldn't get up here or in the table, you could always swing this thing over like that and drill something that was sitting on the floor or whatever. Wouldn't necessarily have to be on there. So guess I'm pretty happy with the with the project. I'll take you off the tripod and give you a last look at the whole thing in general. That's the up and down crank. This lighter with the arm on it. The base. 
in the stand, piece of channel iron. The old drill press table, you can move around wherever you want or not use it at all, depending on what you're doing. And I'm going to have to reposition this so it doesn't hit on that and returns all the way. And that's what the uh, belt tensioner wound up looking like. And that's pretty much the end. It's been a long one. Thanks for being patient. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. And please subscribe if you would like. See you next time.